Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and today I want to talk about the changes coming to the monk job in Final Fantasy XIV's next expansion, Endwalker. Now, in the recent letter from the producer live, we learned a lot about how the job will be evolving after its semi-reset rework kind of thing back in patch 5.4. I've mulled it over in the old noggin, and I'm ready to share my thoughts on the changes and how they might affect the job going forward. So for those who aren't familiar, Monk has historically been a job with a few identities. The first is its constant use of positional attacks. You're constantly swapping between the rear and the flank of enemies to deal greater damage. The second is its three stances. Each weapon skill has a stance tied to it that grants a bonus effect to your next weapon skill. So you normally went from Opo Opo stance to Raptor to Coral, and then looped back around, adjusting which weapon skill you use for each stance depending on what effect you needed at the time. This was as opposed to a traditional combo system like you'll see with most of the other melee jobs. Finally, the biggest part of its identity was its Greased Lightning. This was a stacking buff you had to build and maintain in every fight to increase your damage and your attack speed. Losing this buff was the equivalent to dying. Maybe not your character dying, but you dying. Inside. Slowly. Now back in patch 5.4, Monk was basically given a reset button. They removed Grease Lightning and instead made it a trait. This means Monk is now always going fast, but effectively it removed one of the most major skill differentials the job had. In my opinion, it was overall a good call, but only because they promised that they'd give us something new in 6.0 to build on what they had done in 5.4. Well, with the letter from the producer number 66, we now have an idea of what that thing is, Masterful Blitz. With Endwalker's release, Monk will get a new major job mechanic in the form of Masterful Blitz. By activating their perfect balance ability, they can execute three of their weapon skills back to back to back in any order. Each of them grants a chi or a chakra based on the stance associated with them. Once they have three chis, they can execute a Masterful Blitz, which changes based on the combination of chis you've obtained from perfect balance. Now three of the same stance chi performs elixir field, dealing AoE damage. Three different chis performs rising phoenix, a powerful AoE. There is also a blitz for having two of the same chi and one different one, but we don't know at this point from the live letter what that skill is or what its function will be. I'm speculating that it is tornado kick and it is a single target blitz option in the place of using elixir field, which with the way you can access elixir field in an AOE rotation does seem to make a bit of sense, but that's just speculation at this point. Now each of these three skills also grants either a light or dark chakra. Once you have one light and one dark chakra, when you use your next perfect balance, all five gates will open to allow you to unleash phantom rush, a huge finisher for massive damage. So now Monks will be playing around trying to hit Phantom Rush every two minutes approximately after the opener, and of course one in the opener itself, while otherwise feeling like the familiar job that people have known for years. They still largely have the same rotation outside of burst windows, maintain your Twin Snakes buff, maintain your Demolish dot, and then alternate between Dragon Kick and Boot Shine with Opa Opa Stance for big crits. The only difference is Twin Snakes and True Strike both had their positionals removed, which after looking at some interim potential openers based on what we already know, I see why they did this specifically for burst windows. So a pro for these changes are a fun new identity based on a classic Final Fantasy character. You know, when Machinist made their character based on Edgar, I thought, man, I wonder if they'll do that with any other jobs in the future. Make them based more off of a character that meets a certain identity as opposed to just trying to make it its own thing the way it is in 14. This whole system, this Blitz system, including some of the ability names, are right from Final Fantasy VI Sabin. No suplex it seems, yet at least, but it makes for a much more dynamic Monk experience during burst windows. Currently, Monk has difficulty transitioning into their burst, at least optimally. If there's any sort of break in your rotation, it gets kinda awkward. With Perfect Balance now being this short of a window, you'll be able to enter your burst much more easily. Twin stakes are demolished falling off, we'll just work them into your perfect balance to get to your finisher on time in a burst window. There will still be optimal ways to enter a burst window, but it shouldn't feel terrible if you're not 100% on point with this. Another pro, for me at least, is still keeping with mostly positional gameplay. Even with two positionals gone to help the busyness of all your bursts, that still leaves four positionals you'll have to do. I don't know about you, but I expect Instinct will take over on True Strike and Twin Snakes still, so I'll probably still feel like I have six positionals for a while. Moving more into neutral territory, their chakras should still be largely okay as well. This is another job gauge they have where whenever they land a critical hit or their allies use weapon skills or spells within a, a buff window, their brotherhood buff window, they get these stacks of chakras, and at five stacks they can unleash either a powerful single target attack or a powerful AOE attack. 
One issue we saw with the 5.4 changes was that chakras were overcapping super easily. It was just too busy with off global cooldowns. And well, it looks like there's going to be a lot less off global cooldowns for Monk going into Endwalker. For me, that's not really a pro or a con, but it's kind of a trade off. Monk just won't have much in the way of OGCDs. Shoulder Tackle isn't a part of their DPS anymore. Elixir Field is a blitz. And I don't see Tornado Kick on the bar in the preview, but maybe it's just not there. So that really just leaves chakras and your perfect balance. I'm not sure how I'll feel about this in execution, because it might feel a little bit slow, especially in the early levels, but I'll have to reserve my judgment on that one. At the very least, it does help with the chakras overcapping and not having the ability in your opener or re-opener to actually spend this resource. Also kind of neutral is the change to their mobility. So I mentioned shoulder tackle isn't part of their DPS anymore, and that's because it got replaced with what is essentially the monk equivalent of ethereal manipulation. You can teleport to the side of an enemy or to the side of an ally in an instant, and that's really cool. That's gonna be really nice for the mobility of the job, but I've never really felt like I needed that much more mobility. I'm just gonna be kind of grateful that I don't have to randomly work shoulder tackles into my rotation, and instead I can use them strictly for getting around the arena and improving my uptime. So I think it'll probably be better for the job overall, but I am gonna miss having more of those off global cooldown damaging skills and shoulder tackle was among them. And the last thing I'm neutral on, I'm mostly neutral on because I feel like I don't have the whole picture. I don't wanna call it a con. I really don't know what to call it, but apparently one of the skills that Yoshida hovered over, a tooltip, was for Riddle of Wind. And the skill had a 90 second cooldown and reduced his auto attack timer by 50%. So he'd basically be auto attacking twice as fast. It makes sense for a monk, but it's just kind of weird. It doesn't really do anything or interact with anything. And if it's on 90 seconds, then that means it's not fitting that whole 60 to 120 second thing that they said they're largely aiming for. They didn't say every ability was on those cooldowns or made to line up with every single one of those, but a lot would. It's just weird. Like, I, I can't imagine that survives in its current form because it just doesn't do anything. Like, it's just not interactive or fun or... it. I don't know. I, I don't know. So I'm neutral about it until we learn more about that one. Now for cons, I'm still looking at Six-Sided Star and potentially a Notman. Six-Sided Star looks like it's still that finisher-esque downtime tool. You do it right before a boss jumps or right before an enemy dies or the boss dies, and then you just finish them off real quick with an off-global or something. I don't dislike that, but after years of really niche abilities on Monk, I guess I'm kind of just adverse to having them in the first place. It's just been a bit of an experience. And a Notman, well, we still don't know what it does. The live letter showed that it was on the hot bar, but we didn't learn what it did. I'm expecting it's a downtime tool still, but I have a much different wish for what it would actually do. And that wish comes in the form of, well, my final con. And right now, the potential opener and reopeners for Monk are a little bit weird. So you need three perfect balances to access Phantom Rush but you can only stack them to two. You get one charge every 40 seconds. So in the gameplay preview, I saw something that has me concerned for high-end rating, something you won't have to worry about in casual content. So this really wouldn't affect you. They can use perfect balance out of combat. And if that continues to be the case, I hope you like 25 to 30 second countdowns before fights because that's exactly what you're gonna be getting. Every time it feels like they're doing away with something like this, they reintroduce it in some other way. And it looks like Monk is the latest way that they're gonna be reintroducing it. I really hope that changes to some degree before launch or at least before the first Savage tier comes out because quite frankly, I just don't think that this should be a major way that we approach uh, pre-pulls in Final Fantasy XIV. You'd want to do like a pre-pull PB, probably around like 20 to 21 seconds. So that way you could get three PBs in the opener to hit a Phantom Rush during that opening burst. But then you'd also have to worry about not overcapping perfect balance into your 60 second burst window and then your reopeners every two minutes. So that gets a little bit messy when you start doing the math, figuring out the proper PB early time so that you don't have to waste it, but it doesn't feel like it's getting in the way. And I feel like a lot of players just are going to skip that and it's going to kind of end up feeling like it's going to waste. Now, if a Nomin reset one stack of PB instead of what it's whatever it seems to be doing, let's just assume that it's doing the same old thing from before. Uh, and then maybe they made it so that you couldn't use PB outside of combat. That might help smooth it out. That would mean you'd have to anotment in your opener to get an extra PB. And then every two minutes, you'd be able to do that. And that might smooth everything out, make it so you don't have as long of a pre-pull opener. But until we know more about it, we can't really say anything. I just feel like chakras and form shift, it's, it's just, we have enough downtime tools on the job. Do we really need a Notman? Do we really need six-sided star? Do we really need anything else that is a downtime tool? 
I don't think we do. So unless maybe a Nomin works like old Shoha, and I don't think that's a good idea either, I really hope that it has a brand new effect. Now, that being said, while I'm being critical of the things that we only kind of know, because again, we are operating under some speculation here because the live letter did not show us everything. I think the identity moving forward with the Blitzes is a really good idea. It's iconic to Final Fantasy. And again, with the changes, it really frees up getting into your burst window. Perfect Balance should feel a lot better to use, even with only three charges. And with some of the potency changes that we're probably going to see, I know they're rebalancing the way that potencies are calculated. It should actually feel like really hard hitting. They look like they're really hard hitting at the very least, so I hope that feeling will be reflected in the damage that they do even after the stat squish. I'm really excited for Monk. It looks like a lot of fun, and I just can't wait to get my hands on it and try it for myself. So you can definitely expect follow-up videos to see if any of my fears or thoughts ended up coming to fruition. And if they did, then, you know, I'll provide feedback on that, and hopefully other people will too, and we'll see it adjusted in some way. Now, before I wrap up the video on the screen, I'm going to show you one of the, I don't know, like five or six openers that I was working on. Some of them with earlier buff timers, some of them with different skill speed numbers, 1.96 versus like a 1.93 or 1.94. But you kind of can just see the general gist of how the job would theoretically be playing, assuming that Tornado Kick, my speculation on that, ends up being true, and that a Notman is largely not useful. Uh, and it's very robust you can see the constant bouncing between all of the skills instead of the usual dk boot shine dk boot shine dk boot shine thing that we're kind of used to now and it just looks super involved and i love it and when i see this i kind of understand why they want to do away with a number of positionals but either way uh I, I'm going to keep going back to the drawing barn on this, and once we have more information, I'll definitely nail this down and try to find a couple of different ones that are consistent that we can at least go into Endwalker with, but if with the speculation that I have, that's what I have for the time being, and I'm sure a bunch of people have already started coming up with ideas based on speculating the last few things that we don't know. But with that, that's going to be a wrap for my thoughts on Monk. Let me know what you thought about what we learned from the recent letter from the producer live. And definitely stay tuned. I have confirmed that I will be attending the media tour this year. So when all the information is available to be posted on YouTube, trust me, you'll be seeing another Monk video. Anyway, thanks for watching. And until next time, take care.